Can you hear me now? 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 Second there. Audio capture two showed audio. Second there. Audio capture two. You can can you hear me now? Hundred percent. You can can you hear me now? Hundred percent you can hear me? Hundred percent you can hear me. Can we get a, a thumbs up in the chat? Can you hear me? Thumbs up in the chat, can you hear me? Hundred okay, cool. Wow, so I really don't like that. That's a bummer. Let me turn this down a tiny bit. Audio capture too. I think I'm looping in audio from the stream. There might be, yeah, I think, I think that's audio capturing too. Wait, okay, let me, I was looping audio. That's not good. So audio capture two. Let me turn this all the way down. But 100%, can everyone hear me now? Good, we, the echo should be off now. I, I saw it too, I saw it on my um, levels. I don't like that. So let's test this out. So I, what I did was, is I worked on this this weekend. If you can't tell, I kind of helped the lighting. Hopefully, every day I turn on the lighting and it's different. It's, I think it's small room. If it's daytime, it's nighttime. The lighting changes. And the, once again, they're a little further away. And I've got a new light up here now. So, um, and then the other light's further away. I redid all the lighting in the room. Um, but I've got some new stuff that I'm working with. But uh, let's see. Can everyone hear me right now? Can you hear me right now? Let's get yes from Jada and Jessica in the chat, and then we'll we'll do whatever you guys want. If you're wondering about the project, if you're wondering about everything, um, no echoes. Audio sounds good, and so what I should be able to do. Okay, so be in the chat right now and tell me, does this mute myself? When I do this, am I muted? So tell me when I do this. Okay, so now I should be back. And now watch this. I can disappear. Here we go. There we go. So this should make me disappear. I've got a button to make myself disappear. And then also, I fixed the uh, speed runs. Let's check the audio on this. So I know. So I, I've got my buttons now. So I have to be like, oh, I have to go. There we go. So I should have been muted there. And I should, um, so I have buttons to mute and all that good stuff. And then we can also do the following we can um, go to speed runs, which has now been, I put the new buffer in, so you guys will get to see us first. Tell me if it's too loud or tell me if it's good. You ready? I think, I think it might actually be a little bit too low, but I worked on this this weekend also. So here's the new buffer. So now we should be over here at speed runs, everything you should be able to hear me. And you can see, yeah, it looks pretty good right here. The This is this, I don't know why I test a lot on this screen, like I'm not see-through and all this good stuff, but it looks good. And now we go back to the main screen here. Too low but beautiful. Yeah, I might I might re-render it and bring up the volume a little bit on it. So that that's what I'm doing in the background as I'm working all these different things. I've got all the buttons here. Can I show this on camera? Yeah, this will be able to be seen. So I've got I've reduced what's on the screen on here, but I've got all my different buttons. And I can also like turn I got a new light. And so I can make the light change by pressing buttons here, which allows me to do a little bit of fine adjustment on it. Like I can bring up the light on myself, I can bring up I can bring up all these lights. I can't control them all that way. I wish I could. Um, I'd have a whole deck of lights and just kind of make adjustments. But um, so it's pretty cool. And I'm really glad uh, we got this stuff, but all that good stuff. So you can hear me. Thank you for saying we can't hear him. So that whole intro to the stream, I'm just talking muted. It's weird because it doesn't show me it's muted on screen anywhere, but it does mute the audio, which is weird. I, I can see my audio levels and usually when it's muted, if I click this mute button right muted but now i'm back so i i looked and i saw the audio levels and i was like it must have been the changes i did this weekend so what i was saying was here's where the video should start it's like hey welcome to stat tool we cut the intro part out of that maybe well it'll cut the chat if i do that so i was muted if you couldn't tell and so here's where the project is at this is the project this is the project data it's found under here under project project three if you click projects you go to the projects page maybe i should remove that but then if you go to project three, you go to this right here. Sorry, it's so small, I said that earlier. And uh, here is the project data. We see here we've got different engines. And then we go down here, that's the Streamlabs. And then we go over here to the project right here. Let me remove out the troubleshooting. And thank you so much right there. 10 million points to Jessica and Jada for be here, being here and telling me we got problems. Um, so the biggest thing is, and I was mentioning this earlier, I might have highlighted it so people could maybe guess what I was talking about, is the project uh, can be turned in for extra credit um, on Wednesday of next week, which gives you 10 days. I was debating, is it nine days, is it 10 days? And I was like, wait a minute, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, that's three days and they have a whole week. So you got 10 days. Thank you, Jay, so much. And um, we've got that can be turned in Friday. And, others, and this is a week from this week. It's got a whole 
you know, like 10, 12 days. So this is a lot of time, but don't let it sneak up on you. One of the biggest things, I'm gonna make an adjustment to this because I don't want people to include numbers. You should make it clear what part you're talking about. Um, like, don't actually put in the, um, don't actually put in numbers like, num question number one. This is kind of to help you know where the points are being allocated at. Like, that's the reason we do this right here. Um, we could say part, but the biggest thing for this is where I think people lose a lot of points, and I've seen it lately, and my graders I know go harsh on it because I asked them to, is with the executive summaries, you have to do three parts to it. You really have to talk about, you know, what is the problem we are addressing, which will be here in the prompt. Like, why are you writing this report for the company? Two, what are your key findings? And by key findings, I mean like, if you could reduce this down to just like certain numbers that you're making decisions by. Imagine if we did a poll of the class to order pizza, which I know we're not there right now. What would you want to hear in the summary of the report for the poll of the class about ordering pizza for which topping we ordered? Anyone have any idea in the chat? Like, what would be a good thing to report? Like if I said like, well, here's why we ordered this and this pizza. Like, so like the problem would be, we decided to order pizza for the class and Brian took a poll of the class to ask them which toppings they wanted. So there's the problem laid out. There's what we're doing. We, um, how many types? We consider this type of pizza, this type of pizza, this type of pizza. And then, so think about what's gonna happen at the end of this. And so Jessica right there, a million points, great answers. And remember, keep track of these points, keep turning them in. And I love the conversation in the chat because it helps me like go come up with more and show whoever, through these examples what we're doing. So we got Brian was gonna order pizza for the class. We considered these many types of pizza. And then we'd probably wanna know how the vote went. A vote was taken and it was decided on, what are, oh, the points? I don't know if you're, if you're in our section, we just give out points. And then the points are for, at the end of the semester, I do a small curve to grades at the end. And the more points you get, the more I curve people's grades. So that's how I do it. That's how I do my extra credit if you're not in our section, but I just like throw out points everywhere. And then, um, the more you get, the more curve you get at the end. It's up to 2% on your final grade. It's like participation is all it is. And it lets me see. And also, I don't know if Streamlabs is working. Streamlabs, are you working today? Last class, it wasn't working. But um, next semester, I'm probably going to do it this way. Or summer semester, I'm teaching summer and May term. As long as it's working. Uh, it was working, and then it's not. And I don't know. So um, uh, many, I have been getting major... <laughs> But I'll tell maybe if I see people in my thing, we, we should have a thing. And Streamlabs looks to not be working, so I need to look at why Streamlabs is not working. So um, all these little things, and I don't know why Streamlabs isn't working, but used to be just just a, last week we could check our points via Streamlabs. So everyone's gonna be bummed if that's not working tomorrow. I'll have to look in why Streamlabs is not tracking points right now. Maybe it has issues. Maybe it's not a mod in the chat anymore. I'll figure it out. I'll see what's going on. Does it have to be that? You know what I might have to do. I might have to have Streamlabs running in the background in the dashboard. So let me see right here. Maybe I actually have to have it up and running. Okay, so I've got it up and running now. And so let's look at this and feel free to ask any questions you have. Hey, Julio, I just turned it on. Oh, you got it. <laughs> I love the ex upside down exclamation point. So I just turned on Streamlabs. So let's see if it does it now. Um, it might be that I have to have it on in the background. So that might be it, which kind of makes sense because I've actually had it on on this computer. So maybe, and maybe it's booting up now because we've kind of noticed that, that it takes a time. So we'll check it again midstream here. Um, but I would think, so CloudBot is turned on and we've got here loyalty. And I can see everyone's loyalty points but I might have to be turned in, I might have to be turned on to it. Like I might have to actually have it on like I do now. So I'll keep watching this and I'll keep messing around with it. Um, sorry if I broke the bot. Any questions about the project so far? We can, and so Julio, it should be on, I guess, I don't know. It's so weird to me that it works sometimes and it doesn't. It's probably something I'm doing. It's usually user error. We found that earlier, I was muted. So for those who watched the part, first part of the stream, so questions about the project so far. A uh, project is out. Project is out. We got the project. We got it right here right now. We're analyzing cars. So yeah, hopefully the points start working. I can tell you how many you have, Julio. So you are you are the number one point getter. So I can sort the points. 
So, oh, you got you got someone catching up to you, Julio. You got you, so here we go. And I think it's for streaming time. So I'll bring this over here. There there's your points right there, Julio. So um but you got I, I don't show anyone else's else points yet, but you can probably guess who it is. They're also Oh, uh, I said um it's another person in chat who's in here a lot. Bearded Brian. <laughs> well, I what I was thinking was is I might like shave it. Um, like I might do like a beard and then I might do like a goatee and then a mustache just for the, like the remaining classes, like each, each class I can change what's going on. So, um, no, it's not Caleb. It's two <laughs> Wolverine chops. I actually had those like growing up. I actually like when I was like 15, 16, I actually had those. I had like the, the long Wolverine chops. I, I just like my sideburns got so long. So, uh, yeah, I, I think it's, I don't know. I don't know about this beard. I'm just doing it because I got nothing better to do. So um, might as well document having a beard, a goatee, and a mustache. <laughs> well, I'm online with it all the time, so you get to see the the beard growing. Too funny. Too funny. Um, <laughs> project questions. So with the project, what do we have going on right here? We've got this company, Nissan. Ha <laughs> ha. Play on words. So we got this company, Nissan. And is a car company looking to invest in new machinery to build their engines. Each year, Nissan builds over 10,000 engines. So that's going to kind of be used. That's their that's their sample size. Let's put some notes in here. That is not their sample size. I said that's their population size. Every year, they have a population of engines. That's actually capital N. Lowercase n is what you're going to be dealing with. Lowercase n is going to be your sample size. So kind of a thing we don't talk about, a nuance of notation a lot is that capital N is population size and lowercase n is sample size. It's that statistics deal with samples. And so when statistics deal with samples, we don't deal with capital N. We deal with lowercase n and here's a capital N. So that's a, that's a population size. That is the amount they are building each year, the population of engines. That's every engine they build all year. So think about this when you have the 10% condition, which you'll use later on, maybe you'll use that for the 10% condition. We've got some, some other important numbers here, which are not really statistics. They're just kind of important things we should note. And so, yeah, your report should clearly outline the data, the results, the decision Nissan should make in the executive summary. The outro should focus on the importance of statistics and making data-driven decisions. So if you look at this right here, the outro should specifically uh, go over this. In your outro, you shouldn't just be like, thank you for, for having this report commissioned. Don't, don't do that. Good morning, Andrew. Good to see you here. If you have 320 questions, feel free to ask. And 201, feel free to ask your questions too. So um, the biggest thing is making sure your report is very, 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 very clear. So you can see right here, first question is taking a random sample. So we've got question one, take a random sample. I think we've all done that before. Um, I think I can show that part. I try not to show too much of the project. I might hop to a different data set. But taking a random sample, I don't think I'm destroying the project by doing that or doing too much of it. We go to table subset. We type in 300 plus the last two of our UTID. That should be the last two of my UT, UTID. We hit enter, enter. You can hit OK, but I like to hit enter, enter. And then we have our random sample. So I would go to file, save as, and save this as your random sample. This is what you'll now be working with. And I kind of want to point some stuff out here. Um, as you learn how to do these projects, what I want people to do is kind of Think about what you can do with the data. You can go to Analyze Distribution or Analyze Fit WebEx. Now, million points in the chat. Who can tell me the difference between Analyze Distribution and Analyze Fit YBX? One of them deals with this, and one of them deals with this. Who can tell me the difference between Analyze Distribution and Analyze Fit YBX? What is kind of the key difference you're hearing in Analyze Distribution and Analyze Fit YBX? Um, close, close. They can both handle categorical and quantitative. Close, Andrew. The key thing is this and this. Because think distribution, analyze y by x, y by x. So one is this and one is this. You're very close. There we go, bivariate and univariate. So exactly, a million points for both of you. You're right. Because analyze distribution is just going to tell us the distribution of one thing. Sarah, amazing answer too. And we got uh yeah good to see you here shady so <laughs> all the crazy names in the chat uh oh it's a siberian husky is what it is that's so cool 
so good to have you. And we're doing quite well. Feel free to ask questions if you have it. We're doing statistics, so maybe you're a stat tool wanter. And we see here we can just get the distribution of machines. You know what you can do? You can get the distribution of everything. So you can look at all the distributions right here. Wow, look, look at this. If, if someone's ever wondered what a bimodal distribution looks like, and I'm doing a trick right here, I'm holding Control or Command on a Mac, and I'm adjusting this graphic. Oh, it didn't do it. Oh, what's going on there? I thought if we did that, there we go. Oh, you know why? Um, I'll explain why. The, this top graphic and this bottom graphic are uh, box plots. Oh, excuse me. Bar charts, bar charts. Brain's not totally on right now. They are bar charts. And you can kind of tell this for a few reasons. One, they don't have a box plot above them. I was looking at that box plot right there and I was like, there's no box plot above this one. This is because this one's categorical. And where's, I know, I just need, I need a shipment of coconut Red Bull like right now. I don't know, I, I tried to kick the habit. And so I didn't know this. I thought it would adjust all graphics but it only adjusts graphics of same type. If you notice, I'm adjusting the top one right now and it adjusts the bottom one because they're both uh, bar charts. So if I had to mess it up again, say box plots. This is a box plot. That's a box plot right there. That's a histogram. This is a bar chart, which is categorical. And yeah, another bar chart down here. So what do you notice about the new and the current machines in my sample? What do you notice about the new and the current machines in my sample? Just kind of we're doing some univariate analysis to kind of First thing you always do is visualize your data. Maybe Andrew knows that, uh, being in 320 right there, is we always visualize our data. You could pin this even if you wanted here. So you can always do things like that. I Wouldn't hurt. We've already got the numbers off to the side, but you can always kind of update your graphics. So we just think about how to make these things more explanatory with what we put on them. And so there's always these options, especially inside Jump or inside of R. R is not as clicky, but you can write code to do it. So what do I notice about these two distributions right here? It looks like I have about the same amount of new versus current machines. I have about the same amount. So we have here about the same and equal new versus current. And then what do you notice about this? Wow, there's really something going on right here. It's almost like someone constructed this data to have some sort of purpose. <laughs> Sorry, I did. Um, but you really notice it in this right here. There's, there's strong bimodality to this. Um, Yes, we, there's very sim there's a lot of similarities to it. There's a lot of similarities to it. We kept a kind of similar structure because at least the instructors are familiar with it. So we kept a lot of similarities and we want people to kind of, especially the ones who are helping out to really know it because of all the craziness. Yay. Has anyone seen that the numbers have been really good lately? Um, we had a good weekend. But Andrew, I want to point this out. And we noticed down here, I'll mention this last one, that we have here the fail versus safe. Um, yeah, and I, I wonder if I could, <laughs> COVID-19 cases, okay. So let's go down here and I wanna show you guys something that I've been noticing with the numbers. If I am correct with my projections about the COVID-19 numbers, we should probably see a spike again today. So, so many, all the craziness, okay, so, if you notice right here, there's like a seven day lag to it. They have so many ads on this site now. Might no longer be able to go to this site. There's just so many random ads. Let me, I love this site. And then they put random ads on here. So if we look right here, we've got the dip in it. I'm gonna go away from your site. <laughs> what did that site do? It was such an amazing site till they're like, everyone's going here. Let's just throw in random ads. So, um, but there's like a seven day lag on it. So there's a seven day lag and I've been noticing that, that probably today we're gonna see a bump again in the number. <laughs> I guess they are, I saw that first one, right? It was like, yeah, like shave something or shaving cream. So yeah, um, you know what it probably is? Is probably everyone is doing what I'm doing. Like if you look at the numbers, um, you know, people are now buying like, uh, hair care stuff and all this stuff online. So we see people being like, well, now I need to buy shaving stuff or I need to, you know, I can't go to the barber. I can't go to all these different things. So let me start buying these things online. So probably the people more likely to check the numbers are the more people more likely to stay in, i.e. I me. And so, um, yeah, it's kind of a smart move on their part. 
uh, they're probably making ridiculous amounts of money off those ads. Uh, I don't know. Well, I don't know if everyone's going to that site every day like I am. So, but I watch the numbers and there's really like a seven day lag. And what do I mean by it? So just so you can understand how, you know, when I start to do more and more statistics, what I think about is a lag means this. It means that every time we see this little like dip right here that we've been seeing, because the numbers have kind of gone like this, um, we usually see these dips right here about seven days apart. So there's auto correlation is what we would call this in statistics. Auto means self and correlation means correlated, obviously. And so it's correlated on itself to say that you can understand that the residual, like if we put a line through this or kind of a different type of model, we'll put like a line like this model. But if you notice where the dips are, they go at about a distance of seven right here. So you'll notice, and this is a horribly drawn graphic, I wish I could draw it much better, but it has some sort of, and this is in your book, Andrew, at the very end of it. Like if you were to do like a, an exponential model like that, or a, I guess that's a, a log, an E model, like usually E looks like that when you graph it, you use a Euler's or 2.718, 2.818, all that good stuff right there. You would get this model that would go up and then have a dip here and then have a dip here and then have a dip here. And the residuals on this are about seven days apart. Not that that would be, whoops, oh, I can't redo it now. But this is the kind of stuff I find highly interesting with this model right here. And obviously, why would it be seven days apart, the weekend and all that good stuff right there? I think people are less likely to go get tested on the weekend. And then you see this jump on Monday. So everyone who postponed getting tested or started to feel sick on the weekend who didn't have time is now going to go get tested on Monday. So we see this kind of buildup on Monday where people are like, well, and, and once again, the stats don't lie, the, the statistician does. I'm making up a reason I think the numbers jump on Monday. I don't think it's because everyone gets sick on Monday. I think it's because the weekend, like people are less likely to go get tested on Sunday and also Saturday, it seems. But that might be con contrary to usual things because maybe on the week, if you're working, you're less likely to, I don't know. So um, the numbers just keep showing me that there's this seven day lag on it. But I, I think that's kind of cool. And I just like, I was like, I was like, okay, if my theory is correct, the numbers should dramatically decrease this weekend. Like we should see Saturday, Sunday, the numbers go down. And if my theory is correct, the numbers should have a pretty large spike today. I don't think we'll hit records. I hope not. Um, but we should see a spike in the numbers today. So yeah, that's, and I bet I can show it. Let me bring the screen over here. Well, we already passed it. But any questions related to the project so far, let's hop back to the project. I, I love looking at data. I love looking at numbers. It's always fun to me to be like, what does the data say? What does the numbers say? Good morning, TW. Do you want to check your, see if you can check everyone, if you want, see if you can check your points now. I've had Streamlabs up for a bit. We'll see if points are working again. See, is Julio still here? We're seeing the competition. So as long as I, I don't know, it, I have Streamlabs up and running. And so I was making changes all this weekend. I had a question about the T statistic. There's one we need in an exact way. We only get technology on the test. Are we going to be able to give them that? Um, you will be getting that. Hopefully points are working. Sorry if it's not, I'll get it fixed. Uh, I was fixing things up. I was showing people earlier that now I can control my lighting. I can control lighting on me so I can make it dimmer, brighter. And I can also, we have the, um, check this out. There we go. I got screens back. So we have, I've been improving things. And so I've got all my guns. Okay, so I was, this week and I was changing stuff and I'm gonna see if I can get uh, Streamlabs working again. It looks to not not be on, I'll figure out what's going on with that. Um, and that's why I was always afraid to use it at the start because I was like, oh, I don't understand how to use this. And then it started working, I was like, whoa, it's working. Okay, so when you have to use technology, and which one are you talking about, Julio? Are you talking about um, the two sample t-test? Because here, I'll show some stuff right here. Let me show some stuff. I know, that's what I would say too, Sarah. That's why I like I like this. I think students are more likely to chat with me on this, um, but I have so much fun with this. Uh, so let me do a few things right here. So thank you, Sarah, for that. Like, um, I think this is tons of fun. I have tons of fun talking with everybody, and um, it's. It's, it's so much better than Zoom. In Zoom, you're just like staring blankly into what, it's my opinion. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I like I like this right here. So 
it's all this is is just streaming and I like streaming. Okay, so let me show what we've got going on right here. So, and there we go. Okay. No, 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 Julio, we're, we were just kind of randomly talking. Um, so yeah, and then we'll do that, TW next. Um, yep, you can watch it again. That's what I like too. I love that you can always review it and I love the people putting in timestamps. Thank you so much for those timestamps because we're talking a little bit about the two sample t-test right here for just a moment. So does everyone know who in the chat for a million points can tell me the one sample t-test uh, degrees of freedom formula? The one sample t-test degrees of freedom formula. The one sample t-test degrees of freedom formula. Who can tell me the one sample t-test degrees of freedom formula? Who in chat can tell me the one sample t-test degrees of freedom formula? Exactly, Sarah, n minus one, amazing answer. It's n minus one. There is the one sample. Now that's a one sample. So we put right here, let's put a note. This is one sample. And then we're gonna have to put a note in here. Guess what? I know the two sample. I'm just gonna write it down. You ready? I'm gonna write down real quick. Oh, there it is, I wrote it down. Here is the two sample degrees of freedom formula. So let's go wrap text and let's go, uh, where is it? Behind text, okay. So here is the two sample degrees of freedom formula. Go, don't memorize this, don't memorize this. Great answers, n minus one in the chat right there. Uh, so Julio even put in lowercase n minus one because that's sample size minus one. So yes, another million to Julio right there. It all always auto capitalized, Sarah, another million and shitty seven. Easy peasy, n minus one, one sample t. So that is when you test like a mean. So this goes into TW's question. So um, there's, yeah, there's a really complicated one. So this question right here, TW is asking like, go over which ones to use again, like which types of test. This is like, let's test the height of UT students. Let's test how many slices of pizza people eat because that's a quantitative. It's one quantitative question to one, one group. So does everyone see right here like, let's test the height of UT students. Let's, let's see um, how high of a bowling score someone gets on average. Like you maybe have them bowl 20 games and you wanna look at their mean bowling score. Or you could look at how many hits someone gets in a game. Uh, how many times the ball is hit to the outfield in, in a game. Like on average, how many times is the ball hit to the outfield in, in a game? Or to right field or center field or left field. So this would be like on average, how many times is a ball hit here? You would do that with a one sample T. You have to have a quantitative measure, like you're collecting each game. How many balls is a ball hit to this position? So that's your quantitative measure. Like you would simply collect the data like... In this game, it was hit to center field 12 times, and then the next game was hit to center field 15 times, and you'd keep collecting right here. Now, a two sample T would compare. So, yep. So, when we do a two sample T, what we would compare is two groups. So, we'll put here a two sample T. So, now you could compare uh, center field to left field. So, you could say, let's compare how often it's hit to center field or left field. So, let's put a note right here also. This is one quantitative measure. Now what's confusing about this is you would think maybe it's too quantitative, but someone tell me in the chat for a million points, if we have two quantitative variables, what are we doing? Q, Q. What are we doing if we have two quantitative variables? If we have two quantitative variables, we're doing what? What kind of graphics are we making? What are we doing? What would we have if we have two quantitative variables? If we have two quantitative variables, we're not doing comparing two means anymore. Regression, Sarah, amazing answer in the chat, million points right there. We're doing regression, QQ straight enough, no outliers, plot doesn't thicken if we have two quantitative variables. So it might confuse people, but this one is quantitative categorical. Because think if you need two means, you have a mean for this group and you have a mean for this group. Does that make sense right there? If you have two means, it's like how often does it hit to center field or left field, we have two means right here. We have how often does it hit to center field? That's one group. And then how often does it hit to right field? That's another group. Now there is a way to do multiple means. That would be an ANOVA. So an ANOVA could do, and Andrew should know that. Andrew in the chat right there should know that an ANOVA can compare multiple groups. So you can compare the mean of like center field, left field, right field, and you could compare a whole bunch. Temperature versus precipitation, exactly. That'd be two quantitative measures, and that would be done on a scatter plot. Now this is different because scatter plots are QQ. So a scatter plot would show us something like this, maybe as I think those might be inversely related. Like as the temperature go up, the precipitation goes down. Is that the way it works? Maybe? No, I think it goes up because it puts precipitation in the air, like evaporates. So maybe it goes up like that. I don't, <laughs> I'm not a climate scientist. So I just play one on TV. Um, depends where you live. Oh, wow. Right there, a million points. TW, great answer. Great answer in the chat. 
And so we have this right here. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to change the colors on this. Well, I need another color. Let's put green. So put a green pen. And then we'll go here and do n minus 1 because these are the answers. Oh, no, we'll do this one as the... We'll do this. So what we're doing right now is we're taking notes on the on the degrees of freedom we use in this class. So dark gray. Oh, the dark gray pen is so hard to see. I just, I've never liked that pen. It's very, it looks like gravel. So I've never liked that. The last thing we have for degrees of freedom is the following, and Andrew might remember this from our class, is that we have degrees of freedom when we do the categorical, categorical data. As every temperature at the surface of the Earth rise, more evaporation occurs, which in turn increases. Yeah, so there's, it depends, yeah, so, it's generally a positive correlation as temperature goes up, precipitation goes up. So shady, million points right there. So our last one for degrees of freedom is the following. And thank you everyone for being here. I always love when we have a bunch of people in office hours. So now we have this. So if you look at this, and maybe I'll just write quantitative here. I want people to know it's one quantitative variable. So that's right here. We'll draw graphics to in a moment. The following is the last way we use degrees of freedom in this class. There's other tests that have degrees of freedom. But let's go ahead and put a note right here. And the note's going to be uh, rows minus 1 times columns minus 1. And we will be getting to this shortly. This is really good practice and really good to understand the difference right here. So it's rows minus 1 times columns minus 1. And so this is when the data is categorical, categorical. Can anyone tell me a question we would ask in the chat right now that would use this type of test right here? These are three separate tests. The top one, I can actually reach up to it these days, is a one sample T. So that's a one sample T. This is a two sample T. And this is a chi-squared test of independence right here. So we're going to put these notes on here. I want you right now to be thinking about what kind of questions would we ask or what would we test? Maybe like to see if someone likes cat versus dog and they're male, female, like we could do that. So we could do, uh, we could do, uh, let's say, what's your favorite flavor of ice cream and where were you born? Now that'd be a very, very lots of, lots of, lots of, uh, uh, I'm trying to think of levels to those variables. Andrew probably knows the term levels. We'll talk about a lot, a lot in 320 because where were you born? If we're just going to talk about state, that would have 50 levels, but we need to probably include everywhere. So there's lots of levels to that. Favorite, favorite ice cream flavor is pretty infinite because you'd be like chocolate, mint, cinnamon. And I'd be like, that is a weird flavor of ice cream. Chocolate. Cinnamon is just so overpowering and so is mint. The chocolate's just going to not even be tasted. Chocolate mint is good. Chocolate cinnamon might be good, but the mint and the cinnamon are, is, no, bad idea, bad idea. Chocolate mint's always very good, but chocolate cinnamon, I reserve judgment on that. Let's put some graphics on this really briefly just to make sure everyone knows, knows what's going on here. If you were to see the following graphic right here, this is a what, who knows what this graphic is in the chat? Who can tell me what Brian is doing a small representation of, of a graphic right there? So that's a very small representation of a what right there. It goes with a contingency table, mosaic, TW, nice answers, million points, keep up those answers. So this is the third one right here for the chi-squared test of independence. You have two categorical variables and you'd make a mosaic plot. So the other one right here, ugh, it's gonna be hard to, I think I can get these in here. Yeah, I can draw them like this. This one right here looks like the following and these are side by side what's. Side by sides, nice job Shady, another million. Excellent work. So, and Shady, we're, please tell me if anyone, uh, if you want Shady, email me on your UTK email address. I'm having people do that now if they want to be a mod. So just email me at bstevens at utk.edu and be like, I'm so-and-so in the chat and we'll make you a mod. I just want to ensure that I don't mod people who are not, I think you're UTK. Just email me and be like, hey, Brian, I'm so-and-so. So I'll keep calling you Shady. That's it, whatever name people want in the chat. If you want to be a mod, that is. So if you want to be a mod, uh, email me and I'll make you a mod and that way I know that I'm modding people because yeah that's awesome because I I don't want someone to like block you in the chat because sometimes people come in and they have like a name we don't know and then someone will like block them because lately Julio can probably tell you during the afternoon class for some reason we've actually had quite a few random people join in and um but still let's say you're not from UTK we still want you here we still want to help you out with statistics and Julio is right we got side-by-side -side box plots right here and then the last one could also be drawn with box plots also. 
Now you could do it with histograms, you could do it with stacked histograms, but if you notice the top one is just one box plot, the middle one is two box plots comparing them, and then the bottom, you're welcome Shady, so good to have you. And then um, the bottom one is going to be a mosaic plot. So what would the degrees of freedom be for the bottom graphic? Who knows how to calculate the degrees of freedom for this down here? Think if it's rows minus one times columns minus one, what are the degrees of freedom? No, <laughs> Julio. <laughs> You're cracking me up. <laughs> um, who knows how to calculate the degrees of freedom? Look at the formula and think about the degrees of freedom here. Who can tell me the degrees of freedom for that graphic? So you guys, I have so much fun with the chat with everybody. It's... That's one of the coolest things about like live streaming. It's like one, Sarah, you are right. This is one degree of freedom because there's one row and I mean, two rows and two columns. You are right, it's just one. One of my favorite ways to do this is think about this. If you're doing, um, let's say, uh, were you born in Tennessee? Were you not born in Tennessee? That has two levels. And then yes, I love the graphics. And then um, you, what's your favorite, cats or dogs? So all you do is do born in Tennessee has yes, no, that goes down to one. And then cat dog has two levels. So you bring that down to one and you got this right here. So that's one times one. And TW, do you want to see your points and you want to see who's, if you want TW, I'll show you because do you want, do you want to see your points TW? Since we can't see points, oh, why, why are points not working? I'm going to try to fix that here in a moment. So it is, it is a race right here. Let me show the leaderboard on points. This is the leaderboard. Since you both asked, here is the leaderboard on points right here. So there, Julio is leading the way, but uh, uh, TW, you are in second right there. And it's it's so interesting because I really think it's doing a good job of tracking the points because I notice a lot of names at the top that I'm like, oh, I see them in the chat all the time, all the time, all the time right there. Julio is asking who's in second. And I was like, ah, you, you wouldn't be shocked. So you're in second. And this is out of everybody who watches. Uh, but when will your next stream be? We will be streaming tomorrow at, uh, what time? I'll be streaming tomorrow morning. You need to up your game. Yeah. <laughs> I'll be streaming tomorrow morning. I start streaming tomorrow at 1240, what, 1230. But that's where I'd stream BAS 474, which is data mining, but you can come check it out if you want. Julio's popped in a few times to check out data mining. And I'm sure Julio can maybe comment that a lot of what we talk about in 201 gets talked about in the senior level classes. Uh, so all this good stuff right there. If you learn it in 201, it'll help you out in senior level classes. And then I go into teaching the upper level classes. Um, I mean, excuse me, 201, which is a great class. I love 201. It's, it's what I do. Um, I start teaching 201 at what time? Is that at two o'clock? Two o'clock to seven. So there's two back to back. Let me write this down. You ready? Let's write it down for everybody. So what I start teaching tomorrow is, we go right here, and so that's degrees of freedom. Um, let me just finish off the degrees of freedom by saying this, and then I'll write the times down. Um, thank you, Julio. With the degrees of freedom right here, here's the degrees of freedom. You will not solve the two sample degrees of freedom by hand. You'll use the following website. So this is maybe what Julio was asking about, is you will not solve the two sample degrees of freedom by hand you will use this site right here, and you'll enter in the numbers, the sample size for group one, the sample size for group two, you'll enter in the standard deviations, and you'll get the degrees of freedom. From this, you'll go over to like a thing like statdistributions.com, and you'll do that right there. Um, so, oh yeah, we can do that next here, TW, we'll do that, help me write down. So this is just where you do your degrees of freedom and all this good stuff. So let's answer, when will Brian be streaming? We'll write down those times. And once again, not a, a, oh, I'm so thankful for TW. Don't worry, TW. You put so many timestamps. You're so awesome. I really appreciate that um, because I know so many students have told me the timestamps. Don't worry. I don't want you to spend all day putting timestamps because I know you've done a lot of work with timestamps. If anyone's watching a video and you think a part's really important, yeah, then you click on them. Good. Talk to you later, Julio. See ya. So we go here tomorrow at 12:30. 12:30. I I usually start the stream then. I might not appear. That's. 474 and then at 2 tomorrow I hop over to the 201 stream and I remain on the same stream but then about 340 because I usually go and get some orange juice or something I got my orange juice back that's 201 again and then 5 tomorrow I do office hours so this is my Tuesday Thursday schedule 
So Tuesday, Thursday, I'm online a lot. Like Tuesday, Thursday is like my all day online. So, and I usually stay in office hours to like little after seven or so. This is all here on the same link. So I've heard people say like, wait a minute, you did like, I don't have time to watch this seven hour class. So it's like, we do an hour and a half of class, another hour and a half of class. So I do the same lecture again. Just, I think it works better when you don't, you know, if we had like 800 people watching, it'd be pretty crazy. We usually, first class, we usually have about 70, 70, 80. And then second class, we usually have 120 or so. I look at the peaks at the end. It's so cool. You can see the bimodality to the class. You see kind of this, and then it goes to this, and office hours happen, and it kind of goes like that. So this is like the scale of amount of students in the class. Well, office hours usually has like 20, maybe 20, 30. But um, yeah, so if you have questions, feel free to ask. But that shady right there are the times. Um, and I think we're going to hop to TW's question right here. So one tail, two tail, right and left wording. So we'll go over that right here. Let's go over the tails of the test. Well, let me do one last thing. The other thing is on Monday, Wednesday. Monday, Wednesday, I have less hours. But Monday, Wednesday is 10, um, 10 to 12. So, I mean, all those kind of connect on times. But 10 through noon are office hours. Awesome. So, yeah, thank you for asking the questions. So... This right here is when I am online now. And you can just hop in, ask questions. Just if you jump in, say, hey, I'm stuck on this. I can work any problems you want. We can talk about concepts. You know, we were just talking about degrees of freedom and the three waves we used in the class. Right now, we're going to hop over to talking about left tail, right tail, greater than, less than. And we're going to kind of practice writing our own problems right here. But that is my schedule in my horrible handwriting. If I, if I could just snap my fingers and have one thing right now, it'd be amazing handwriting. I mean, of course an end of COVID-19, <laughs> world peace, we could do, I mean, if I, yeah, if I can get all my, all my wishes, we'd do that, but <laughs> nice handwriting would be a plus for me. So let's write a question right here. Now, <laughs> so, and like I said, the numbers are getting better, which I'm very hopeful for. Uh, Brian wants to investigate <laughs> um, the percentage of students who like Taco Bell I swear, <laughs> I would just want Taco Bell. That's all I, if I could just snap my fingers right now and have one thing, it'd be Taco Bell. It'd be like, I haven't had Taco Bell in so long, I'm forgetting my order. The Frito, the Frito taco thing, I know, going out to eat, like if I could go out with Chelsea right now and just go to Garage Burger, oh my gosh, oh, Garage Burger is so good. It just, oh, a, a chili cheeseburger at Garage Burger with fries. Mexican, oh yeah, if we could go to Soccer Taco, Pete's Cafe downtown, great place. Pete's, I walk by that all the time playing Pokemon Go. If I could walk outside and play Pokemon Go. I'm getting like nostalgic for last month. <laughs> so um, yeah, Pete's, I've only been to Pete's twice. I think it's good. I've been to Pete's twice. Soccer Taco is my favorite though. TW, do you have a favorite Mexican place that you, the kids, Sono Taco, so South Knoxville Taco? Oh man, I've heard that's so good and I haven't been there yet. We should have a class party when this all ends. <laughs> Well, I have to go. Thank you. You're welcome very much, Shady. Good seeing you. You go once a week to like Pete's. Yeah, it's it's a pr it's pretty chill place at Pete's in Texas. Rosas, Rosas, uh, me gusta Rosas mucho. So people, I, sorry, I love I love Spanish. I trabajé en un restaurante con muchas personas, uh, muchos años pasado. Uh, my gosh, in Kingsport, Tennessee. Uh, yeah, I miss that a lot. I miss working in a restaurant. So, um, yeah. I muchos or muchos años pasado, so um, many many years ago, literally I worked at Cheddar's in Kingsport. Um, how many? I started working there almost twenty years ago, two decades ago. I started working there almost. It's like eighteen years ago. I think I started. I worked, started working there right for my twentieth birthday. Yeah, because I wasn't twenty one when I turned it, and I spent another New Year's, and I do remember. So I was nineteen when I started working at Cheddar's. Good memories. Going back here to Brian's question about Taco Bell, we got sidetracked on food, all those good memories of food. So um, Brian wants, to, um, oh yeah, I was a server. Oh yeah, server, did a bunch of things, washed dishes, uh, hosted. I never bartended. This The one thing I never did, I never bartended, but uh, I I took a shift one time like in dish pit and stuff. Oh, you're sorry? Oh no, I, I, I don't know if I could do it nowadays just because like, I don't know. It, it It's tough. It's tough, especially when you get, 
it's a lot of fun and then you get a customer who's like really mean to you that's cool that's why it's cool have been yeah the struggle of serving yeah it's just like dealing with tables because some are super nice and then oh no you're fine you're fine <laughs> this is our fun it's uh if people are like hey brian i got this question uh yeah don't like me it's always be nice to your server and i always say like you never know what's going on and like yeah exactly and um the biggest thing is like there one time this is a very quick story one time somebody knocked over do you guys know those things you stack the glasses in so they're like a grid, a four by four grid. I think they were maybe, I think they were four by four or five by five, but you put all the glasses in them, then they go through the dish pit and then um, pumps the steam through them and cleans them with the clean solution and all that good stuff. And then they stack them on top of each other and you pull them out so you can bring them out. So I took a glass out of one of them and someone hadn't stacked them properly. And the, the whole thing started to fall at me and I was holding a glass. And rather than letting the whole thing just crash to the ground, I grabbed it with the glass in my hand. So I've got a glass in this hand and I grabbed it and literally none of them fell, but the glass like shattered into my hand. And so all my tables are probably like, where's our food? Where's our server? And I'm in the back and they're like fixing up my hand. <laughs> and so and like, I was just like, it was so bad. But, um, you know, especially when you hear crashes in the back, that could be your server or your server could be helping out with it. So when something crazy happens, if all of a sudden the service gets a little bit wonky and you're like waiting on your server, those things can really, uh, said the sugar on them would fall. So we, oh gosh, <laughs> that's crazy. Uh, so <laughs> you're crazy, Andrew. So, uh, yeah, no, it's, it's, I, so many crazy things. But I, I, I loved waiting tables when I did it. It was a lot of fun. I took it very seriously. Every job I've had, I've been so like, how can I optimize this job? And so that's why I do the YouTube thing. Um, yeah, if you see China on your paycheck, that's classic. I'm trying to think of the other ones. If you see China on paycheck, you haven't won a vacation. I remember that. I never, I never saw anyone with China. I did see someone knock over um, the whole cart when they would cart the dishes back. I saw someone knock over the cart. Um, yeah, it's... It's tough, and there's not really... You can make good money waiting tables, and this is my last aside on waiting tables. You can make good money on waiting tables. I respect everyone who waits tables, but I would say it's 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 hard to like have a career in it. I mean, if you're going to have a career, you're probably going to go into like fine dining. You're going to find a really... Especially right now, you're right. So, um, yeah, and think about all those people who... Because to get into fine dining, you really have to... It's a different type of service. It's a lot more silent service, which probably I'm not very good at. Um, and you have to be very knowledgeable on wines, on pairings, on all these different things. You have to just, it, fine dining is its own thing. And I got into fine dining and I didn't like it nearly as much. I prefer things like cheddars where you just have like, just people just wanting food, not, not a whole experience. So I know a lot of servers it, yeah, that'd be a, what would we do? Uh, TW and Sarah. So, uh, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. What that means. Um, watch this. Um, Brian wants to do a study on servers and how much money they make. He collects data from uh, 50 random servers and finds out that they make on average Let's say some money, and that's not enough. Let's go with, uh, that sounds, that sounds about right. With a standard deviation, you know what I'm gonna use? I'm gonna use my favorite number right here. With a standard deviation of, it's gotta be a pretty big standard deviation. Construct a 95% confidence interval for the, so what would I put right here? Um, what would I put right here, right here? Oh yeah, that'd be very, Andrew, that's very interesting. We could do that next. Uh, oh, 
So what are we constructing this interval for? We've gotten back on topic now because we can use anything to talk about statistics. Statistics is just about analyzing variation in data. So what do we got right here? So what are we going to construct the interval for? Fill in the blank. This is where I see a lot of people make mistakes. It's the true something. What are we constructing an interval for right here? The true what? What are we constructing an interval for? The true what? True mean, TW, you're right. Nice answer right there. We're constructing an interval for the true mean. You are right. So um, that's what I want people to realize right there. A lot of people just say true proportion because we do that first. So people get in their mind, okay, true proportion. But you should stop at true. You should be like, are we constructing it for the true proportion? And then Andrew asks, Andrew wants to know the true difference between the means. Andrew is asking, what is the true difference between the means of males and females? So he's asking a two sample t-test right there. So as everyone noticed, Andrew's question in the chat says, we should do a males versus females server range. And that would be uh, true. Yeah, do true and then pause. I like that Sarah right there, a million points. You should pause right after like <laughs> with our condition one, condition two. So we see this right here that we we need to think about what are we putting in here and this is the true mean so we need to identify our notation let's do some notation identification an identification right here we don't want to use that highlighter we want to use this highlighter so we've got this i want to see in the chat can anyone tell me what these things relate to um so when it comes to the tails here's the big thing i'm going to turn this into a tail question right here in just a moment tw because we're going to use this question to then do a statistical test so then we're going to start talking about tails right here. So I'm going to use this right here and turn it into a tails question. Like when do we know it's left tail, right tail, or two tailed? And then I'll draw some graphics. I think it'll really help. So, so you can tell me and keep asking questions. I'm going to turn this into a tail question. Awesome. So we see right here that this, I think everyone knows. Oh, I missed one number. Missed one number. Who's got numbers in the chat? So be practicing with me is that we need, to, we need to highlight everything, we need to circle it, we need to identify where the numbers are at. That's step one to make sure you do the problems right. Not like the steps we do on statistical tests, but this is how we know we get things right. As we say that is n, this is y bar, which is the sample mean, this is the standard deviation, which is s, and this is going to be the t, which tells us the percent confidence right here. Or, well, we're gonna use the t to figure out what, you know, what is the t for the confidence interval. As in, let's go do it right now. We need to find the T and we need the degrees of freedom. So let's put a big arrow right here. Arrowed. We're gonna do an arrow and we're gonna do degrees of freedom is N minus one. So we'll do a D right there. Degrees of freedom equals N minus one. That is equal to 59. We have now all of our notation for this problem. That's what we wanna do is mark our notation. We've got Y bar. So that's all the way over there. There's Y bar. That's not Y bar, that's T, but I can't touch Y bar, it's outside of my green screen. So here's T right here. We've got S, which is a small S for sample size. It's not a capital S, it's a lowercase s. And so we do this right here. Let's take the information we now have and let's go do our T statistic. So my favorite site for this is statdistributions.com. And if you notice the degrees of freedom are 59, so we're gonna put those right in here. And so it's very, very close to two. Is it, there we go. It does that extra decimal. I think they added that in recently. Um, Oh man, so close, so close. And then 60 not gonna, this 60 is two, should've remembered that. It's so close to two, let's go here. And if you're wondering what a 95% confidence interval looks like, it looks like the following. Now, if you notice, I already knew it was two because um, we did it with 0.5 or 5% on the outside. So if you're wondering right here, I usually use and is it not, oh, I don't know why I was looking like that button was clicked. This button right here, you do the tails, which that's still 95% on the inside. But when I do a comp stroll, I like this button right here because it makes more sense to me to talk about a 95% comp stroll having 95% on the inside. 5% on the outside is a 95% comp stroll, but 95% on the inside is still a 95% comp stroll. So how do we know which to click? Great question. So this right here, I usually use for my two-tailed test when I get a T, like if someone were to tell me the T is 2.8 or something, this is what I would use for a two-tailed test. I would use that top button for the does not equals test. And let me do this right here. I think this is where it'll really help. And this is what I want to do right here. Uh, so let's write this down. I'm going to go to a new sheet real quick. So this, I think, will be a big help right here. You ready? On this graphic right here, I would do the following. If you are doing the two-tailed test, I would use... This one right here, this is your does not equals two-tailed test. And on this one right here, you input T. 
So that is your does not equals two tailed test. Now this is your right tailed test, which makes it the greater than. And so you would do a right tailed test and you're still going to input T. This one is your less than test and you're still going to input T. So that's your left tail, left tail test, your less than test. You're still going to input T. Now the bottom one right here is your confidence interval. I like this one for confidence intervals on the very bottom. We'll draw some arrows on these, make sure everyone knows what we're talking about. So on this one, I actually enter in the P value. So I hope this is what I wanted to do right here, and this is what I wanted to show, is that, and we'll draw some arrows on these, or connect them in like this. So I, I don't use the, the fourth one. It's kind of from zero to a value, so it kind of it goes down the middle. So it starts there at the middle, too bright on me right there starts there at the middle and shades up to a value. I don't use that one. But does this make a little more sense right here, Tracy, that for the two tail, you'll enter in T and get a P value. For the right tail, you'll enter in the T and get a P value. For the left tail, you'll enter in T and get a P value. And then the bottom one I use to say, let's graph between these two values and you enter in the P value and it gives you T. So you would say like, I want a 95% comp interval. What is the T? So I want to point this out. When you make a confidence interval, you usually give the percent confidence, like I want a 95% confidence interval, and then you compute the T to use. But when you do a statistical test, you actually solve the statistical test for T and you obtain the what? When you do a statistical test, you solve the statistical test for T and you obtain a what? So when you do a statistical test, you solve for T and then you'll enter in the T and you get a p-value exactly. When you do a confidence interval, you say, I want this percent confidence, and then it gives you the T to use for that percent confidence. So you're not solving for T in a confidence interval, you're using T to create the confidence interval. When you do a statistical test, you solve for T and it gives you the P value. So once you get T by solving for it, you get the P value. So kind of knowing which one you put in is very important. I think that's where people get confused. But when you say, I want a 95% confidence interval, that's the information you know over here, so we'll go back to it. So we'd say, okay, I want to make a confidence roll, and I want it to be 95%. Now I know that doesn't say percent confidence. I'm glad that helps, because this is, I think, I've always seen this confusion on it. Like, which of these do I use? Why am I entering in where it says p-value? Because that's just your confidence level. I wish it changed, and I wish it said confidence level right here, or I wish it said interval, and then, you know, it'd be great, because we could update this for our class usages. But if you know how to use it, then it gets a lot easier. And so I picked something close to 60 because I knew 60 was close to two because now when I go back to my problem, where's my problem at? It's gonna be this one. So when I go back to the problem right here, I know the T statistic. And so let's go ahead and do this right here. Let's go ahead and do uh, Y bar plus or minus T with N minus one degrees of freedom. That's what we just saw for. The star means it could be any confidence level. Like I could say 90, 99%, 95%. That's why I put a star in it. It just means you get to pick the confidence level or the question might be telling you it. And then we put here S over square root of N. And so we're just gonna solve this right here. We put in our numbers that we got 2,800. And then we go here plus or minus two. We're just gonna do two. And I wish I did super easy numbers. I did 60 as my sample size, which is not the easiest to square root in your head. It's gonna be between seven and eight, closer to eight. And then we go 400 right here. And so that's like, it's gonna be about 50 and then two times 50, but it's gonna be a little bit, it's gonna be a little bit more. It's gonna be like 108 or so. Let's see how close I was. I say 108. So we're going to solve, like that's going to be the margin of error is 108. That's my guess on it. So we're going to go 60 square root. And then we're going to go 400 divided by that. I said 108. I was kind of close. It's like 103. So now we're going to times that by 2.001. That was the extra decimal. Didn't really make that much of a difference. And so that's what 2 actually was in the applet. Um, like seeing hard problems as example, sometimes you get the easy ones. Yeah, and wonder why everything you need to work is so hard. Yeah, and so yeah, I hope this one helps out right here because we kind of made this problem from scratch and then we have to think about what are the steps. So if you have a really hard one you want me to solve, I can do that too. So I agree, like I like doing easy ones and I like showing some hard ones then to be like, okay, here's a really tough one. And so now we know that this is the margin of error right here. You're welcome. Now I want us to think about this right here. 
Now, you know what's really interesting? I'm gonna show you some tricks right here. You ready for this? We're gonna see some really cool tricks in this that I know. So um, hopefully this will help you out right here. So I'm gonna type in 103.3. Okay. Oh wait, uh, <laughs> I didn't write 103.3. So, okay. I want you to, to remember, Tracy, what the standard error is. What is the standard error for this problem? Now think about how we got this right here. I want you to just kind of give me a rounded version of the standard error. I want you to give me a rounded version of the standard error. And I'll show you how I solve problems in my head here in a moment. I'm gonna solve a problem in my head and I'm gonna give you a p-value very close to it. And then I'm gonna want you to think how I got this. Oh wait, close, close. So this one, the standard error is going to be this. You're thinking of the great, great answer right there. You're thinking of the standard error for a uh, proportion. That is the standard error for a proportion. The standard error for this one is S over square root of N. So I want you to give me the numeric value. So when you look at this right here, this is this right here. And then this is this and everything solves out to this. So I want you to tell me in a rounded version, in just a rounded version, what is the standard error? Like what is the value of the standard error just in a rounded, very easy for someone to understand version? Uh, yep, and then what is it gonna be mathematically just as a number? Like if you were to solve this, I want it to be just very rounded. Yes, Sarah, that's exactly what I wanted to hear, 50. So it's just, it's basically 50, we saw it earlier. If we want to do the exact standard error, it would be, uh, Terry, uh, Tracy put it in the chat also, it'd be, uh, we do square root of 60, and we get this, we do 400 over it, and it's that right there. It's basically 50. It's basically 50. Does everyone hear that? So now we're going to write a new part of this question. We're going to write a brand new part of this question, which I wonder if I can, okay, there we go. Brian now wants to test to see if the true Okay, so I'm gonna tell you the answers right now. You ready? Here are the answers to this. The T statistic is about 1.93 and the p-value is gonna be a tiny bit, ooh, it's gonna be so close to 0.05 that I'm, I don't know which way it's gonna go. It's gonna be like 0.051. So here's my guesses on it, you ready? These are Brian's guesses. Brian's guesses are that the T statistic is going to be, we're gonna get a T, oh, it's gonna be above, it's gonna be above 0.05, I know that for sure now. Uh, the T statistic, and I can tell you why I know that too. The T statistic is gonna be like 1.93, and the p-value, is going to be equal to uh, 0 0.058. How did I know all that? Does anyone idea how I knew any of that? And I can do this, I can run this test actually very quickly now. I can tell you the T like almost instantaneously. Like I can do, I can find the T in five seconds. I wish we could put a timer real quick on the screen because I have everything I need to solve the T right now. Okay, so how did I find the T? So. Here we go, this is what I know, and then I'll solve it in just a second. Like I'll show you how I can solve it so quickly. What is this value right here? What is this value right here? This value in notation is what? It is mu naught. That is mu naught. Let me put it a little bit above it right here. We'll do an arrow outside of here. And it's a mu that looks like that. It's got a little O on the bottom of it, meaning mu naught. And so we'll kind of use that for the nulls and alternatives. So this is the, the null value we are testing. It's the hypothesized value of the mean. And so here's the math I'm doing in my head right now. And I'll show all the equations and I'll work it step by step. The top of the equation is y bar minus mu naught. What is y bar minus mu naught right now? Who can solve y bar minus mu naught in their head? Who can solve y bar minus mu naught in their head? What is y bar minus mu naught? Any ideas what y bar minus mu naught is? So look at the top of the screen for y bar and subtract mu naught. And am I doing it? Observation minus mean, so it's gonna be negative. Oh no, Brian made a mistake. It's negative, negative 100, exactly. So now because I'm doing a two sample t-test, it doesn't matter. Um, so I was doing that, I mean not a two sample, excuse me, a two, tailed test, a two-tailed test, it doesn't matter. 
So I'm, I'm correcting myself because it doesn't matter. It's just the difference because absolute value only matters in two-tailed test or it doesn't matter in two-tailed test. So what I'm doing right here, amazing work, million points right there. So all I'm doing is taking this and there's the answer. If you round it, I didn't get the right answer, but I was very close to it. And then we take this and then we go over here to the applet and we do the two-tailed test. And so we go to two tails We'll put in the negative here, but it wouldn't matter if we put in the negative or the 0.058. Whoops. Oh, now we're opening R by accident. Oh, we were doing such a great job. This is my redemption arc right here. So we were able to guess, we were able to guess both of these down to the decimal. Let's do our steps right here and see why we were able to solve this problem. The reason we were able to solve this problem so quickly is because of this right here we knew this was about equal to 50. And 100 divided by 50 is about equal to what? 100 divided by 50 is basically, or negative 100 divided by 50 is basically, negative 100 divided by 50 is basically, I'll see in the chat. <laughs> negative 100 divided by 50 is what? Negative 100 divided by 50. What is redemption? Yeah, the <laughs> well, it was on Friday, I was getting so many problems wrong. Friday, or was it Friday? I think it was Friday I did office hours. And like, if you watch Friday office hours, I got like three things wrong. And I was just like, if I get things wrong, I get into a downward spiral where I start to like move too quickly. I start to like, I seem to like take a break. So I just have to like laugh it off because when you're teaching or you're doing problems, like imagine doing a problem in front of the board, like in front of the class on the board. If you make a mistake, all of a sudden you get anxious and if you get anxious, you get more anxious and it just builds. So on Friday, I got like one thing wrong at the start and I just started to read problems too quickly and I was like not noticing small things. And if you don't read like, you know, is this evidence to reject the null or do we have evidence for the alternative? It can change the way you say yes or no or true or false. But all my math was accurate, which that's what I care about. Uh, frazzled.com. I couldn't believe that I sent you one, uh, that one I sent you after. Yeah, yeah, no, it's so, it's, yeah, and I'm so glad to help you out because I was just like, I think you have the wrong number here. And you're like, I do have the wrong number. And I was like, yeah, that's all it is. Just one wrong number. Problem gets, you can't solve it. So great job. And I appreciate everyone working so hard because it's, I know it's a lot different right now when we're not all in school together and you can't just come to office hours, but I hope this helps a lot. Like, I still feel like I get to see everybody somewhat. Like, they asked us, what do we miss most? And I, I said, office hours. I miss seeing my students. So, yeah. I'm glad this helps a lot. That's what I like. And so, if you notice from the problem above, let's just make sure people see. Pause the screen right here. Here's the top notation. We've got N. We've got Y bar. We've got S. We've got T. Now, this is, this is I want to, like, that is a different T. That is the T for a confidence interval. This time, we're solving for T. And we have mu naught right here. So we need to go to our notation right here and put in everything we found. There we go. You're welcome, Sarah. So it's y bar minus mu naught. Uh, S was 400 over square root of n is 60. And so we have right here, this is gonna solve for t. So this solves, you notice there's no star on this t. I just wanna point that out again. Ay ay ay. There is no star on this T. There is no star on that T. You do not pick this T, you solve for it. You do a statistical test to find out T, to find out what this difference is, standardize, and then you use the T to find a p-value. So we go right here and we get that this is negative 100 over, and the whole thing on the bottom solves out to exactly, we've still got in our copy paste, I think. Nope, we don't, so we gotta solve it again. It's like 52 point something, let's see. Um, whoops, 60 square root, and then 400 divided by this, 51.64. So 51.64. That is this right here. And then this equals up to, um, da -da 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 -da, what was it? 1.936. So with this right here, um, went to school, a new state, not knowing what I was able to get with people really enjoy the class and like, yeah, you're so welcome. And, uh, yeah, that's so awesome, Tracy. Like, no, it's, and I'm missing, I just, 
I think, Tracy, you sit over to the right, I think, in class. You sit, like, first row on the right. Like, I was telling other people, like, where they sat. In 474, if you watch that video, I was like, Caleb, you sit over here. John, you sit over here. Livia, you sit here. And then right next to you is Connor. And so, like, all these people, like, I'd be like, you sit here, you sit here, you sit here. Saeed, you sit here. <laughs> Retweet, Connor. Oh, good to see you, Connor. So, um, you know, like, I, I miss seeing people in class. Like, I miss looking over, seeing you right there, Tracy. And then we just had, you know, it's so crazy. Like I know the front row pretty well in the second row and third row. And I still know people in the back row, but you know, usually when you talk in class or you're taking notes or you come to office hours, I get to know you better and I get to say, Hey to you more often and be like, Hey, what's up? So, and thank you for coming to online. So here is the T statistic. So we're going to take this T statistic right now. Let's go ahead and take that T statistic. We put it inside of the applet. Now we're doing a two tail test. I should have done, there was a step I didn't do and didn't show you guys. This is technically step number two, which is solve for the T. Step number one is to write your null and alternative. So let's put step one here, even though we did it out of order. We need to do the following. Now, when you're, when you're first practicing, this is like practicing piano. <laughs> you're welcome, Sarah. I do remember that. Aw, I'm glad people remember that. I thought it'd be so cool to bring a huge bag of peanut, like for, it's like, now this is a big cluster. So um, I'm so glad people think about those things and hopefully remember that that did you get the part right on the test like what's a cluster did you get the cluster questions right <laughs> I hope you did so part one right here is what we're testing part two is our statistical sign and part three is going to be the value we are testing so we have to think about what are we testing are we testing and we're just going to write our notation here so we know the only things that can go in part one are going to be the following it can be uh, mu it can be p or it can be mu1 minus mu2. So those are the only things that go into part one right there. You bet I did, that's awesome. So we've got all these things that go right here. Now, what are we gonna put in part one today? What are we gonna put in part one? Let's get part one done on this. What are we gonna put in part one? Who knows we're gonna put in part one for a million points? Oh, you already got the whole thing, Sarah. Amazing work. You're like, I got that whole thing. You're right. Great work, amazing work, Sarah, a million points right there. And then we put the equal because the null always has the equal sign. The null has the equals. The null has the equals. And then the value we put right here is mu naught. Now, if you notice by practicing our notation up above, we make sure that we mark what mu naught is. There's mu naught right there in fancy space pen. And then when we get down here, we know that mu naught has to be this. So if you're looking at this, this is mu naught. Like the value that, that is there is the hypothesized value. So since we've already marked it in notation, we're gonna just make sure we know that this is 2,900. And if it was P at the first part, it'd be P naught. It's the hypothesized proportion. We go right here and we put this in, and then we wanna see if there's a difference. So we put this, and then, and one thing we always wanna point out here is that this always is the same. Whatever you put for part one goes for part one on the null and the alternative. Whatever you put for part three goes for part three on the null and the alternative. And then the middle part just changes signs. The middle part is just to change the signs. Then after we write it, we read it one time to make sure we know what's going on. The null states that the true mean wage that servers earn a month is equal to 2,900. The alternative states that the true mean wage that servers earn a month is not equal to 2,900. So we're just seeing if it's equal to or not equal to. Now, how did I know, going way back in time, how did Brian know a good guess of the p-value? Brian knew a very good guess of the p-value, part number three right here. Brian was able to figure out the p-value because, so does the sign for the alternative indicate which tails for the test? Sarah, you are right. Sarah, another million points, amazing note in the chat. That indicates the sign right here. So indicates which way we're gonna do the tails. So if it's less than, you shade to the left of it. So our p-value for this one would look like this. If it's greater than, it would shade this way. And then, oh, it's, well, here's the thing. On this test, we landed here, so it'd be this. And then if it's does not equals, that's a horrible normal curve. They're just getting worse as we go down. There we go, that's better. On this one, the does not equals looks like the following. So that is what it looks like right there. Julio, good, because it's close to, exactly. Julio, great answer right there. You'll also notice, because the T right there was close to two, that's when I first started thinking about it. And then also, I want us to look at our confidence interval. Would 2,900 be in this confidence interval or outside this confidence interval? I'll write the values for the confidence interval right here. Would 2,900 be in this confidence interval or outside of it? 
the interval I've written right there, would it be inside of it or outside of it? So we need to take uh, 2800 and we need to add this. Watch what happens when I add this. Ah, right there, it's in the interval. So we go right here and we put the following. So we put our interval and we go to 29033. That's way too many zeros. What is going on? I was on a streak. That's it right there, I think, right? Let's double check. Oh, that's why I knew there was more threes. There we go. And then this right here, I was trying to solve the other one. Usually when I make a mistake like that, I'm solving other, the other one in my head. And I was thinking about, there we go. And I think that's it right there, or technically it's gonna have the seven on it. So did I say it? <laughs> oh, wait, no worries. <laughs> I like all the answers right there. Million to Julio and to Sarah. Keep the answers coming. I like it when you guys are practicing in the chat. And, yep, there we go. So with this right here, always try to solve the math in your head. Yeah, you just, you mix up another number, make sure, check your numbers, so easy to make a mistake. I was like, well, that doesn't look right. We should have it in the interval. And why is it 29,000 29, a month would be amazing. That'd be insanity. So right here, we see that it's in the interval. If something is in a 95% confidence interval, can you reject it at the 0.05 alpha level on a two-tailed test? This goes back to, and the answer is no. This goes back to a huge concept we talk about that when we do confidence intervals, a 95% confidence interval is the same mechanical work as doing a two-tailed test with 0.05 alpha. So if you do a 95% confidence interval, it's the same as an alpha equals to 0.05. So if something were to be inside of your confidence interval, you could not reject it. If something was outside of your confidence interval, you could reject it. It would have a p-value smaller than 0.05. So the t with the asterisk you get to pick, the other t you have to solve for yes. The t inside of the confidence interval is one you basically get to pick based on the confidence level. Like a question will tell you generally, but you're picking it, so to say, by saying 95% confidence, 90% confidence. When you just do a t-test, you don't pick the t, you solve for t, and then the t solves for the p-value. So in a confidence interval, you use t, I mean, you use a p-value to get t, and in a test, you find t to get the p-value. So it's kind of the reverse. Confidence intervals go from what is the percent confidence to what's the t, uh, oh my gosh. Yeah, we use the percent confidence to get the t, and then a test, what is the t to get the p? So tests go t to p, confidence intervals go p to t. You might just need to practice that. So CPT, CPT and test go from CPT and TTP. I don't have a good way to memorize that yet, like a good thing that kind of keeps it straight, but CPT, TTP. <laughs> It cracked me up in the chat. So why am I saying CPT? Confidence intervals go, start with the P value and you go to the T. Tests start with the T and go to the P. So we have CPT, TTP. But uh, however you want to memorize that or practice it is good. And that's what we're doing right here. So we get back to this right here. Our last but least thing on this is we have to go to the applet and take our T statistic. So I'm 80% confident would have an alpha level and would be able to be more precise if it was than a 95. Um, if I was, a, yes, exactly. So an 80% confidence would be the same as doing a test with 20% alpha or 0 0.20 alpha, and it would be more precise than a 95% confidence roll. You can also increase precision by increasing sample size. I know, Julio, another million points. You're doing amazing, Julio. Like your, your answers are right on there. Your knowledge is right on there. Amazing, amazing work. I just, ah, oh, I just think it's awesome. You guys know that, that I'm just like, I'm stoked that uh, TW, Tracy, you also deserve the highest accolades too. You guys are doing amazing. It's just practice. It's asking these questions. This is how we learn is we have a dialogue. So if you're watching this right now, not live, just join in the chat, come to any of our classes and start asking the questions, whatever you're stuck on, whatever you're thinking, just bounce it off me. Practice, you might get some things wrong. Ah, oh, Tracy, that's one of the best compliments. I have fun doing this. It's like, statistics are not boring. It's like solving and being like, oh, let's look at this. Let's solve this in our heads. So I don't know. I like, I loved math growing up and then math got crazy. <laughs> Aw, well, thank you. You guys are great. So, um, well, thank you. 
we we like to have fun here. So you guys you guys make me smile, and I'm so glad. One, I'm glad that we have this whole YouTube thing. Um, UT has been very very supportive of it. We're doing something interesting that you know everyone's on Zoom, everyone's figuring out all the nuances of Zoom, but we're still here just live on YouTube, and I enjoy it so much. It's Teaching to a webcam and just looking straight into that webcam, I don't know. I know, just I don't want anyone to think I'm saying, oh, no one should be teaching on Zoom. But this this is my last little thing on this. Is that we have spent... <laughs> Thank you so much, Julio. You are excellent at stats, Julio. You are excellent at it. So um, don't let anyone tell you otherwise, even yourself. But um, we have developed this whole thing that you're watching right now for... We started developing it in, I think, fall of 2018. And it wasn't released till fall of 2019. Yeah, we went all through the winter there developing it. We started developing this a um, year and a half ago. And then it, it was developed for a whole year. And um, it was a lot of people working on this to make this happen. Which now I can tell someone, I could make this happen for someone else. If any other universities want to know how we do all this, I can... I can explain the process and get you all the tech and all the gear because I want other people to start realizing the fun stuff we can do with students. But um, yeah, and Humble is good. So yeah, maybe don't think you're amazing. Like you are though. <laughs> um, but this took a lot of work by like Dwight Campbell, by Jason Greenway, by Dr. Mark Collins, who we just probably wants me to call him Mark Collins. Uh, Charlie Quick supported it. Uh, Mike Galbraith, Dr. Mike Galbraith supported it. I was so I can't help but say doctor because they've earned it and they deserve their their graduate credits. But um, the amount of people who've supported this and helped me do this and helped me get tech or given me time to do this is astounding. Um, yeah, this this took a long time, and this I'm used to this now. Like I know where my cameras are at. I've you know, Jason taught me how to green screen. He explained it to me and I had to watch more videos too. But Jason Greenway, who I need to maybe talk to more, like he's so nice to me. He, um, he's been in the film and video industry, not film, uh, TV and TV and video creation. Maybe he's done film. I don't know. Uh, for like 20 years and his knowledge helped me. And that's how we do the famous quote. We stand on the shoulders of giants is so true because if I didn't know Jason, I wouldn't have been able to do this. Like, it wasn't Brian Nerdy Tech that got this done. It was Jason and Brian, really. And everyone else, like Dwight and Charlie and Dr. Galbraith and all these people and Collins, because Col Dr. Mark Collins has been a huge support. Um, yeah, so it, it's tough. And I, I'd say thank you to everyone who's working hard with Do Zoom. Yeah, everyone loves Jason. We need Jason Cam back. Um, but Zoom is good, but I really like what we do. And I thank all the educators who are working really, really hard at um and this is my last little sign on this there's so many educators right now who are trying to up their game and make really great content and i see it everywhere i see all these people doing new things trying new things and i think they're the ones who are going to lead the way because what we did is we had something very scary we had even i'm i had to build a home studio and so you know i've got the green screen just behind me right here i'm just touching it right now um, I've got the lights right next to me, which you're really not supposed to do for green screening or have it like just where you can touch it. But, um, we were able to adjust and augment. And, um, I know a lot of people have done that. And I've literally seen people at UTK, like, uh, Dr. Jackie Jacobs. She, um, is doing where she has her iPad and everything using multiple screens. Mark Collins is doing that too. So many people, uh, Oh, really? That's so cool. Well, thank you. They're free. To, they're free to talk to me. They're free to get advice, Sarah. I appreciate that. Um, and I, a lot of people have worked really hard. I really, I would say the majority of people I know, and I've seen it, I've had meetings with people. We were training people before this all happened. And there's no way, this is my last, probably last things I'll say on this, is there's no way everyone could be trained up to do what I do in um in like a week or something and they kept telling me that they were like when i would go to train people they were like just keep it simple just keep it simple don't don't be like don't put too many bells and whistles on it just keep it simple and um that's what we oh so good seeing you have fun with your daughter <laughs> that's too... well yeah you crack me up but um there it's and i i give simple advice and i give complex advice i had a zoom meeting last week with someone in another department but um I um, was helping them come up with new ideas and explain to them what we do. And so there's a lot of people very interested in this, but 
this is something you have to practice. And this is my last thing, literal last thing on this. I keep saying that, but what's helped me so much with this, I think is video games. I know that sounds crazy, but doing these streams is like playing a video game. It's like, you've got the camera, you've got this screen, you've got that screen, you've got chat. There's a lot going on. And so I've got three different areas of attention. I've got the stream, I've got the chat, I've got this. And then I have to understand how to organize it all. And I've been using computers since I was four years old. So I'm really lucky that a lot of my life has led up to this, that it's weird playing video games, playing piano, um, being a tech nerd really has helped me. And you take an educator maybe who has spent their whole life teaching in the classroom, maybe they've, they're have they really great in front of a class. And now you're like, you need to do everything you do in front of a class via technology. That is so scary. I can't imagine if it was like, hey, you're really great. You're really great in front of class. Uh, there, <laughs> maybe I'll find some of those videos. But could you imagine... It, it's just a whole change to the system. And that's what happened, happened to so many people. And I see so many of them working so hard and it'd be too much to say like, you gotta, you gotta do like this guy, you gotta be like him. You gotta be like, you gotta be like him, you know, with all these crazy things and all these, you know, transitions, you gotta be like speed runs. Let's do a speed run here with Mega Man. So there we go. You gotta have all these crazy things. You gotta have your counter right there to see if people are subscribing. So we go right here. Uh, <laughs> oh gosh, third movement of Moonlight. No. Oh man, that third movement is insane. I just love hearing it. That third movement of Moonlight Sonata is amazing. I just wouldn't want to play the first part of it. There's um man, I got this. Oof. I highly, I highly doubt I could play it. I can play Rondo a la Turca. I can't play third movement. And my Rondo a la Turca is so rusty. And I don't have every movement of Rondo a la Turca down anymore. So um, that was one of my favorite things to learn how to play. Um, we run the country so <laughs> um, <laughs> We'll do this last third part here. It's like we have one question. No, it's um, I've got a I've got a full piano. Oh, that's so awesome. I'm so glad you taught your kids on it. Like that's... I started playing piano about at age six, I'd say. So I've been playing piano like 25 years. And I don't play nearly enough these days. Sometimes I'll learn a K-pop song for Chelsea. And I haven't done that lately. So I learned like, um, what was it? I think I learned uh, Knock knock on My Door, Knock Knock by um, Twice. So I learned that. I learned like just the melody of it so I could just play. I should relearn it so I can play it again. And so, um, yeah. Maybe I'll do that today. Maybe I'll be like, I'll be productive today. <laughs> okay, so the third part of this right here, we got the p-value, we'll finish up this question. I mean, we basically did it. The The p-value is above 0.05, and since it's above 0.05, we don't reject the null. We've done a lot of these problems, and I like practicing these to make sure we know how to do them. We're gonna go back here, we're gonna look at this p-value. The p-value here is 0.058. So since the p-value is above 0.058, we're going to fail to reject the null. Let's go back here and put down that p-value right here. So we're going to draw a graphic with the p-value. So we go in and remember our t-statistic from part two. So our t-statistic from part two was negative 1.93. I forgot the negative on that, negative 1.93. Oh my gosh. Click there and then scroll down. So this is negative 1.93. And the p-value here because of it, and I did a very good guess. Let's pat myself on the back, maybe I shouldn't. Now next next class I'm just gonna get everything wrong. That's that's what happens. So it's karma. Like, oh I got something right, now I'm gonna get something wrong. Now the last part right here is to reject the null or fail to reject the null. <laughs> so now we're gonna use an alpha. I'm just gonna say alpha equals to 0.05. And if you notice the p value is above alpha, when the p value is high, just let it fly. What do we mean by let it fly? Do not reject the null. So I I am going to not reject. Now here's something. I would make people do in class. I would make people do this in class all the time. You connect these two sentences together. You connect, I do not reject the null hypothesis that the true mean is equal to 2,900. P value is high, just let it fly. I do not reject the null. So I do not have evidence. Remember when we do not reject, we do not have evidence to the alternative. So I do not have evidence that it is different than 2,900. And now we look up at our, our confidence interval up here and think about this. Was it inside our confidence interval? Yes. And anything inside a confidence interval, 95% confidence interval cannot be rejected at the 0.05 level. 
we go back and we look at our graphic here that we would say confidence intervals are the same as doing a statistical test, but a two-tailed test. So there are ways technically, here's a technical thing, Tracy, that we could say is that if we want to compare a confidence interval to a one-tailed test, we could use it on this right here. Now, technically, we landed on the lower side, so maybe I should show it that way. So you could do this right here, and you would also not be able to reject it on this. Now, this is something we don't talk about much, but just think about it theoretically, is a confidence interval is like a two-tailed test with 0.05 alpha, or 95% confidence is like a two-tailed test with 0.05 alpha, but then you could do the one-tailed test, there we go, um, with 0.025 alpha. So it's, I don't wanna mention that too much, we don't really mention that in class much, but uh, that is kind of, you know, if it's 5% on either side, would well, be the same as doing half that on one side. Because think, if it's 0.05 both sides, then you could just say, well, we could look at the lower test. Now we don't, that's not a big concept we cover, um, but you could use a confidence interval to do a one-tailed test. You would just do, have to do half the alpha level, or you'd have to do half the one minus confidence level to get the alpha level. That would be, it would compare to. Don't put that in your head if you don't want. This is the very easy version of it. I just mentioned the complex way. So we don't, it's not in the notes, it's off notes, but does that make sense theoretically, Tracy, that if this is 5% on the outside, I could do the less than test, which would have half of this alpha right here. So because over here, which we're not using it right now, <clears throat> that's the total, <clears throat> sorry, sorry, I'm not sick. That's the po total 0 0.05, but we're just taking half of it now to get the 0 0.025 to do the less than test. That's a complex way of thinking about it, but if it makes sense, cool, but don't, don't put that in your head for the notes if uh, that'll confuse anybody. So don't put that in your head for the notes that that'll cause confusion to it. So, but that does that one test right there. Tracy or Sarah or anyone else, Julio or anyone else watching, um, what other questions are there? What other questions are there? If you have a question, feel free to ask. What other questions are there? Might head off a little bit early because I have a meeting at 12 and then it meetings at 12. Oh, that's my one hour. I have a meeting at 12 and then, look okay, at I've got a 12, 30. We don't need to have all that one. You're not sure at the moment, cool. Well, we've done a good stream today. We did We did a question, we talked about degrees of freedom. So we had a talk on degrees of freedom. We did a question, whoever watches the video, they're like, oh my gosh, you're just talking about teaching. We talked about teaching. Uh, <laughs> what did your next online stream? Oh, we talked about that. We talked about that, Tracy, great question. We talked about that earlier. Here's my horrible handwriting talking about the streams. We've got the Tuesday, Thursday, and the Monday, Wednesday streams. So tomorrow morning, I'll or tomorrow afternoon, I'll be on. Um, and once again, if you guys are ever stuck, you can always email me and be like, hey, Brian, we're stuck. Um, but I think the office hours will get a lot of the project done. We talked about the project at the start. The mic was muted. Um, so you might not have saw it, Tracy, but I can mute myself. So I can do these things where I can mute myself. I can make myself go away but I was trying to adjust this and I don't think the points are working again yet. You know what we might do? I might spend the last little tiny bit of the stream trying to get the points working again. So let me turn on the bot. Uh, so, how does it go here? No, that's gonna install it. Ah, the screen also went black. Well, maybe that's why. Was there? Was there? Hmm. Yeah, I know. That's what I need to understand, too, is I need to understand technology. Let's see. So let me... There's the degrees of freedom. Let me see if I can pull up the bot. It might not be modded in the chat or something. So I'm going to look at this real briefly. I don't... I want to get the... Cloud bot should be working. So let me go to it might have like lost its mod status. Yeah, look at that. So if you guys have questions, feel free to ask. I'm gonna I'm gonna investigate this. I have a TI-84. I'm trying to figure out what problems I can use it on. Is there something we can learn about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me show that, Tracy. Um, oh, Sarah's got a link right here. Let me, oh, wait. 
Oh, that's Moonlight Sonata. <laughs> okay, I've lost the chat. I can't see the chat anymore. Oh, that's amazing. It pulled up the, um, it pulled up the, whatchamacallit, it pulled up this, the thing, we might get a reverb on the stream now. It pulled it up, Moonlight Sonata in my chat video. I was like, oh, cool, that's the, so let me show Tracy this right here. Third moon is just insanity. I know I should sit down. It would take me so long to learn the third movement. See, now I say that and then I just want to do it. I want to be like, okay, I can do it. That's why I learned Moonlight. That's why I learned Rondo Alaturka. I was like, this this sounds really fun. This sounds really impressive. And there's so many crazy things. Amazon, what's coming? Package with. Oh, good. Yes. So then I gotta wait three days on that, but there we go. Quarantine period for the packages. And then, uh, da, 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 da. here, Tracy, I'll show you this right here. Um, Tracy, I'll send you the link to the playlist. And then we're gonna figure out what's going on. Where's my TI calculator playlist? TI tutorials, here we go. So Tracy, check out this playlist in the chat right here. There we go, okay. So this has a bunch of stuff in the chat, Tracy. It's got a bunch. So, um, so <laughs> yeah, it's like, I want to get one of those keyboards where it lights up the lights or like they have those programs now where you can watch the keys come down at you. I think that would really help me. It'd be like more like playing a video game. And so I feel like I could be a lot better. Um, but if you have any questions about which ones to use here, Tracy, like there's the chi squared test of independence, the two sample, like uh, Tom Hanks and Big. <laughs> yes, such a classic movie. It's so good. Gordon Ramsay, you're making perfect burger. I finally got cheeseburger, so I'm happy about that for the moment. So, but he's on YouTube making perfect burger. I do remember that video. I watched it, and so got some advice, but can't really use it all right now. Um, where is it? YouTube Studio. Okay, let's see here. Um, I know where to go. I was just looking at this, and I hate to think that I broke something a few days ago. Okay, let me see here. I think I found it. Okay, here we go. So, Streamlabs is supposed to be a mod inside of here. Let me see if Streamlabs is a mod. I have so many mods, and that might be the issue. Streamlabs might have lost its mod status, and Streamlabs is supposed to be a mod. Or, or they just made changes to YouTube I think they just made changes to the live streaming and maybe Streamlabs can't do what it used to do. So I might, I might work on another cloud bot or something because I'm looking at all this stuff here and I'm waiting to see Streamlabs. And I don't see it. So maybe Streamlabs is no longer a mod, which is kind of good because Streamlabs is not a mod that is probably the issue. I didn't see Streamlabs. Let me control find right here. Okay, so I can search through this. And it looks like Streamlabs is not a mod. How did Streamlab not be a mod anymore? Okay, so Streamlabs is not a mod. That's the issue. And they've got a thing to add it. But let me try it. Okay, so let's look at the chat, see how the chat's doing. This is Brian trying to fix the room. You're a bit of the classics, yeah. It's Tom Hanks, it's like, I remember seeing Big growing up, and it kind of, I think that freaked out a lot of kids. Like, one day you might wake up and be an adult, and it's kind of happened. Probably older than Tom Hanks was in Big right now. Ah, uh, scary things. How old was Tom Hanks in Big? That is the question of the day. How old was Tom Hanks in Big? Can't mod Streamlabs. Hmm. Well, I'll be darned. How do I mod Streamlabs? We found the problem. The problem is, is Streamlabs is not a mod, and I don't know how to add Streamlabs as a mod. So let's do this. Well, they've got, they've got the button, but it 
It's like you can add them by a mod by doing this. And this was 10 months ago, but it looks like it's changed. It's a year ago. Huh. Well, I found the issue, Tracy. So every time you stop and don't move a bit, I think my... <laughs> Yeah, you, you see my eyes probably just reading the screen here. He's just being like, da 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 Streamlabs. Wait, this is a Streamlabs YouTube. Why did that? I wonder if, well, no, I did that like afterwards. I think YouTube updated their streaming platform and I maybe they don't let you use Streamlabs as a mod. We might have to go to Nightbot. Might have to go to Nightbot or something. So, Streamlabs. Someone reported an issue in late March, but we were working. Okay, someone. Same thing right here. Yeah, okay, cool. This guy says what I um, already knew is that you have to use public streams. I found that out the hard way. But you also need to go live on your main YouTube account via Streamlabs OBS and not on YouTube's page. The best way for Charles Sugan, okay. So I think we found the issue. Um, and then people are saying turn the bot on and off. Uh, Oh, it looks like I might have to figure this out off stream. So pretty funny. My phone autocorrected to be. <laughs> he was 32 when Big was made. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. I just saw him on the the SNL thing, and he's like so old now. Oh, I'm sorry, Tom Hanks. How old is Tom Hanks right now? He's so old now. He's I say so old. He's 63. That's younger than my parents. He just with the like shaved head. That he had like his hair is really short now um he just looks way older so so he made big 31 years ago see that that sounds like forever ago and then i'm realizing okay that's like the late 80s like that's like 31 years ago is like 89 um is he made in 89 sounds about right time wise so 88 yeah so he was yeah 88 so he's like way younger than me I mean, he's an adult, but he's like, you know, he's like, a, <laughs> I mean, everyone younger than me is a kid. Not to, I don't mean that literally, but it's like, I don't know. It's like, I'm not that old. I'm still, I'm still young. So if you're younger than me, you gotta be really young. Uh, what is, what is that? What is that movie right there, Tracy? Um, what is, what is that movie about? Or is that a movie or is that a TV show? You'll have to tell me here. So I'm looking back and forth. We're seeing if we can solve the mod issue for the last bit of the stream right here. Um, I have connected it. I have modded it. No, why? Oh, wait, you know what we could do? I got an idea. I got an idea. I'm, you know what it might have been? I might have misclicked a while ago. I just had an ingenious idea, Tracy, is Streamlabs is not modded right now. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to a stream where we had Streamlabs in there. What's going on? Oh, I typed it wrong. I'm going to go to a stream where we had Streamlabs. And in the stream where we had Streamlabs, I'm going to go to Mod Streamlabs. So he, it should show Streamlabs unless I blocked them for some crazy reason. But let me go, pull up a previous stream. And we should see Streamlabs in the chat. I think I must have misclicked on something... If, during when I was correcting or demodding or fixing things, but you know it's usually user error. Can't blame everything on on the YouTube. Um, so I'm going over here to a stream, and let me go to where everyone's checking their points between class. So I should see Streamlabs in here. Look, people are saying points, but I don't see them 
There we go. Streamlabs is showing up. It's showing up as a mod. <gasps> Streamlabs. Okay, it wasn't modded. Streamlabs is now a moderator for your channel. Oh my gosh. Streamlabs is now a mod again. We're back. So could a mod have accidentally blocked it? Mm, they shouldn't be able to block other mods. I was trying to... That's a good question. I was trying to fix stuff on the channel. So we're going to check here. And let's see if Streamlabs is back. Oh, Andrew heard that right away. He's like, okay, we're back. So let's see. Oh my gosh. We did it. We fixed it. So we fixed it. Um, Streamlabs lost its mod status. We demodded. <laughs> That's fine, Andrew. Don't worry. I don't expect you to be here when you have class. You came back. So Streamlabs is a... Uh, what I use is a thing called OBS Streamlabs, which OBS stands for Open Broadcast Software. So this is a free software I use where you can broadcast yourself. Like I had to learn about all these things. And it, students taught me this. Like James, one of my former 320 students now on 474, taught me stuff about streaming. Um, he came to the studio, helped me set up stuff, gave me advice, gave me things. Luke, who was a former 201 uh, uh, stat lab helper, he helped out with us uh, streaming all this stuff, gave me advice, worked on Photoshop stuff with me. And I've written a grant, a UT1 grant, which I should be hearing back about soon. I hope that goes through. But I wrote a grant for like $18,000 Um Something like that. It was it was around twenty thousand, I think. But ten thousand or so of those dollars are to to pay students who help us out. I want to pay them. I think the going rate might be around twelve dollars. But the work they would do would kind of be like freelance work. Like they would make graphics for us. Th these transitions I make right here, like this right here, this little fun thing I've made. So that little oh, I'm too high up. I can go through this. I can reach up. Sorry, my my hands in the box. <laughs> there we go. So. Um... So um, how do we apply for that? Well, hopefully I get it. And then Andrew, I could start paying you guys. And so I'd have a core group of people. And so Andrew, what's, do you have Photoshop skills? Do you have After Effects skills? Um, like what, what skill set do you have? Like, feel free to tell me Photoshop, After Effects, um, using Adobe Premiere. Like those are the big skills I'd be looking for. That, that thing is something I made right there. That was made in Adobe After Effects. You can learn anything. <laughs> awesome. Well, you know, we'll talk. Um, thank you so much. And that's what I want is with the UT1 grant, I want to grant, I want to develop this stuff and I want to have new things we can do. And then especially, you know, if we can pay people who stream to help us out. Because right now a lot of students, I bought Luke coffee one time um i think I, I think i got maybe got james some stuff when like you know just like buying someone coffee just for like thank you for he talked to me for like we talked for like almost two hours i think and we were doing going over streaming so i was like let me get you some coffee and he was like you don't have to and i was like he's helped me for two hours but we were just like talking and just you know but i just want to say thank you to the people who helped me and i think a big thank you would be like hey we can pay you for you know like what you know and what you've learned and so if this one grant comes through we'll be able to do that and so this all takes time. Like <clears throat> knowing how everything works is very big. Do you accidentally tell your friends or your family great stuff to have something? <laughs> it's so funny that you say that. It's like um, my fiance says I go into teaching voice sometimes. I think that's the only thing that really, um, as a student, it's really nice to feel like it. Yeah, no, that's what I. That's what I like. Is I, I'm always listening to you guys. Um. Uh, well. Yeah. <laughs> Well, one, I don't know if the grants come through. I don't know if the grants come through. And um, two, Adobe skills are really great to have. Like knowing how to... <clears throat> Sorry, all of a sudden I'm congested. I'm fine, I swear. Knowing how to use Photoshop, knowing how to use um, Adobe Premiere, After Effects, those are all really great skills. If you can, um, is it like a year license or something? I mean, it's a, if it's, is that monthly or like a year license? Because usually they license them out. Like usually... Um, I mean, they're great skills and they feel like, Hey, Brian, I'm really good. Remember, I haven't gotten the grant yet. <laughs> we don't know how many students. Yeah. <laughs> uh, if it's a year license for 40 bucks, that's amazing. And they probably, you know what they probably want is they're being really smart. They're like, all these people have this spare time. If people learn how to use our software, then more people will use our software, which is what they want. So they're getting all these people in to hopefully learn how to use their software. Yeah. That's, that's the lowest I've seen it. Um, just for the fact of being able to learn it and getting more skills, I think that's really great. Um, <clears throat> Excel and Master, yeah, exactly. 
they're they want people to start using their software because if people don't use their software another software comes back and starts taking up the marketplace like i use camtasia to do my quick editing but then when i want to make cool transition stuff i use um after effects because it's got like an alpha channel so anyone who does like video production knows what an alpha channel is it's a clear channel like there could be an alpha channel over me right now like what's interesting is when you watch this graphic come in the graphic has actually started right now the graphic is actually happening and then yeah so that one has that has an alpha channel too so the alpha channel is a black it's not actually black it's nothing and so i don't know why they call it alpha <clears throat> i might have to look in. i was like answers to why is it called alpha but um there's nothing on the screen at that moment like the graphic has actually started but there is nothing on the screen. So you have to have an alpha channel. So that way you don't have like, if it was just black, the screen would just go black and then you would see the graphic transition. But since there's an alpha channel, they call it an alpha channel, um, you you see nothing as in, you see nothing appearing on the screen over me. And so then you have to encode it with the alpha channel, which if you don't encode it with the alpha channel, then you'll just have like a black screen appear when I do the graphic. So all these little things I've had to learn about making this stuff, and it just takes practice. It takes like, you know, like, okay, what are you doing? Why do you need this? Knowing why you need an alpha channel. But I mean, that's so small. It's like alpha channel is like basic. If someone's watching this who makes videos, they're like, everyone knows alpha channel. I'm like, well, not everybody. I'm sure other people in the video didn't know about alpha channels. So, or alpha channel. So yeah, that's awesome. And we got, we got the points fixed. I'm so glad we got all the points fixed and people are checking the points again. So we see right here, Sarah got a ton of points. I've got a ton of points. Did Andrew get his points check? Andrew's checked his points. Was Andrew's first? Andrew, it checked your points first uh, before mine. That's so weird. It's like, I'm the owner. See, there we go. Sarah doesn't know. That's fine, Sarah. You see, now you kind of know. The alpha channel, when I press this button, which I'm going to press it again, when I press this button, the alpha channel is when you see nothing. So right now, the alpha channel is happening. So now you're not seeing the alpha channel. So I'm going to press this button, and right now the alpha channel will be happening. So now the alpha channel. And it's, it's when you're seeing, when no change to the screen is happening. So when you make your file and your video, you actually have a blank screen, but it's actually an alpha channel. So it won't, nothing will be appearing on the screen. So I could make, like I could make a dancing Mega Man in the corner. And so I should do that. Oh, that should be our subscribe button. We should have a dancing Mega Man from that thing. I think, I wonder, I'm always afraid of copyright. Those Mega Mans only appear for a second. We might have to make our own gifts. So that's that's one thing I could pay for. I could pay someone like, you know, imagine if you got paid 25 bucks to make Bitmoji. Ooh, send me, email me the link to that. Remind me of that. Because if that's a free site where you can make free gifts um, and it's really good for it, then um, I just want to like, I, I would make my own Mega Man gifts or something like that. So we should have it. And we could have a people subscribe. We could have a Mega Man appear in the top right corner for people subscribing. Brian has Mega Man. <laughs> I'll lay that right there. Well, it was, I'm afraid to see how that Mega Man would look. The very start of Mega Man has him with his helmet off. <clears throat> Mega Man 2, that is. And he takes off his helmet at the end of some Mega Mans. So, um... I remember beating the first Mega Man and being like, no way. There he is right there. Yeah, that's him right there. So, if I, if I uh, shave my beard off, what, what kind of ever beard this is. There we go. I'll go to that one. I could, uh, with my crazy hair sometimes, I could look like Mega Man. He, uh, there's Mega Man 2. Mega Man 2 is my favorite video game probably ever. It's, I mean, there's better video games than it, obviously, but for what it did, and this is my last little side here, and then we'll head off. <clears throat> Mega Man 2 was called... I will not depict you as Bearded Brian. <laughs> so there's there's Mega Man right there. Um, I bear some resemblance, I guess. It look, even his sideburns. He's got kind of the longer sideburns right there. And I got the floopy hair. And we we'll just do this right here. And then we'll just be Mega Man right there. But um, my mom likes RoboCop. She said, oh, that's so awesome. RoboCop is a crazy movie. It's pretty, the, the story of RoboCop is pretty, pretty crazy. Um, I guess that would have came out in the 80s, so that's like 30 years ago. Jimmy Neutron hair at the moment. I need a haircut. Jimmy Neutron. Got, um, that's the same guy who does the voice of, um, I can see him. I can see, <laughs> I won't, I won't, Tracy. Um, uh, said in Detroit, there you go. Uh, what is that guy's name? Um, 
The guy who just slap, 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 clap, clap, clap. The same guy who does that voice, um, he does the voice, um, no, that's not Carl. That's, uh, that's not Sheen. That's, um, Bear Me or something. Oh, your son's a nuclear, that's so cool, your son's a nuclear engineer. Um, he's the, he's the crazy kid. And the, the guy who does that, I think it's Phil Lamar does that voice. And Phil Lamar, the guy who does that voice of that crazy, crazy fun student, um, he does the voice of Green Lantern. He's done the voice of Aquaman. Um, he's done the voice of Samurai Jack. Um, Phil Lamar does that voice. Um, what is the name? I'm sure Sheen's done slap, 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 clap, clap, clap. But um, what is the name of that character? Bolmy, Bolmy. I think his name is Bolmy. I didn't cheat. Looking here at the screen, didn't move my hands around to do the mouse, but Bolmy. Uh, Bolby, Bolby. That's his name, Bolby. He does it. He's the one slap, 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 clap, clap, clap. And Bolby, the same guy who does the voice, voice of Bolby, Phil Lamar. You cheated. <laughs> I didn't cheat. I got it. I said Bolmy, but it's Bolby. Um, yep. So I was close enough, but Bolby is the voice of Phil Lamar, or Bo Phil Lamar is the voice of Bolby, and I guess one and the same. But he does Samurai Jack. He does, um, whatchamacallit, Green Lantern. He does Aquaman. He's done a bunch of other really great voices. Um, once again, won the stream with this. One of my goals as a kid was to be a voice actor for cartoons and stuff like that, or for animated series, the, the technical term for them, animated series. Um, but never got into that. Always wanted to do it. And it's, I would try to do impressions and try to do accents. Um, never got really good at it. There's people way better than me at it. Like, you'll watch YouTube videos of people doing like every Pokemon voice in 10 minutes. And you're like, wow. And that is, I'll be getting ready for my next meeting. So thank you everyone for a really fun morning. We just kind of had a chill morning. It was a chill Monday. So, so good seeing everybody. Check those points if you want. But, um, that's got it. <laughs> slap, 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 clap, clap, clap. So it's funny. My Mac makes the noise. I put all these reminders on everything. Uh, thanks. Great seeing you. Yeah. I answered voiceovers as one of my, really? Wait, you answered voiceovers as one? Oh, you... really? Oh, cool. Rick and Morty pulls random people off the street to be villains. No way. Do they? The, they used Alfred Molina as the devil. So, um, oh, really in Atlanta? I just need to start walking around Atlanta when we can go outside again. I'll see like, um, Justin Roiland or Dan Harmon. And I'll just be like, just be like talking like, and they'll be like, Hey you, or they'll just, they'll like not talk to me. I'll be like, I'll just keep talking. I'll be like, you can go away. We're not pulling you off the street. We're not going to, you're not going to be in a Rick and Morty episode. Um, but Alfred Molina did the voice of the devil. And then Stephen Colbert did the voice of, um, I can't think of the guy's name. I think it starts with a Z. He was the alien with the teeny verse. Uh, to start grumbling loudly. In Atlanta. <laughs> That's not, that'd be pretty crazy. So I have a nephew that learned CGI in college. He works for a news company. Yeah, exactly. Well, I mean, Tracy, if you want to ever say, like, if anyone ever has advice for us or anything like that, you can show them what we're doing. You can show them our cool transitions. But we're always looking to improve what we do, and I'm always looking to learn from people. That's what I try to do in life is I learn new skills. I think it's very important to keep growing and learning and learn new technology. And, yeah. So I thank you guys all very much. And I will say this, the intro screen right here or the outro screen you're about to see, it's uh, we got permission from a guy to use his drone footage and then Jason helped me find the music and then I made, it's actually got a reverse alpha channel. So his dream job, oh yeah, new skills like the third movement. <laughs> Hopefully, I'd love it if I could get that skill. And so this thing you're about to see is the work of three separate people. I should know the guy's name, but we I talked to him on the phone about his drone footage. He said we could use it. Um, so I found his drone footage on YouTube, contacted him, said, can we use your drone footage? It's for education. We're just gonna show it as a backdrop through the stat to one thing. Jason helped me find the music. We sat down and we went through like, probably like 20, 30 songs that he has access to because he has the full studio and licenses to them. So we used his license to put this song behind it. And then I made the video. So here's the creation of three separate people's hard work. <laughs> 